chat today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It's uh, nice to chat with the Pangolin community. For sure, for sure. So just to introduce um, who's on the call and the topics. So we've got the Pangolin team here. We've got uh, myself, Leo, Justin, Oscar, Brandon, and we have Luigi, who is the director of DeFi uh, for Ava Labs, who builds the Avalanche Network. And he's also leading the Avalanche, <laughs> the Avalanche Rush program. So really exciting. We want to cover that topic. We want to cover Pangolin and kind of just learn about Luigi and how he got to where he is. Uh, but I mean, before we dive in, how's, how's your week been, Luigi? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, can't totally complain. So, uh, you know, been been excited to kind of get uh, Ave and Curve finally launched on the platform. Uh, that's been, you know, a, a process in and itself, but it's it's really excited. Um, really exciting to actually have that happen at this point. And now we can kind of like move on to the things I've been trying to move on to for a few weeks. Yeah, Avi and Curve are so exciting. Didn't they get like a billion TVL in one day? That must be a record or something. Uh, yeah, I think Ave got, um, I think in 24 hours, like 1.7 billion or so. Wow, that um, is crazy. Yeah. yeah, between Curve and Ave right now, it's like 2.3 billion or 2.4 billion on, on, on Avalanche. So definitely a lot of money in those protocols, which is pretty cool. Yeah, really great to see them here and, and all the action. But um, so let's um, let's talk a little bit about your background, Luigi. Tell us, you know, what you were doing before Ava Labs and how you got into your current role. Uh, sure. So um, my background is really in financial services. Uh, I worked at Citigroup for about seven years uh, as a trader, uh, traded uh, institutional markets. I trade credit default swaps, interest rate swaps, equities, uh, you know, on an institutional basis. So clients were the Black Rocks, Millennium, Central Banks, etc. cetera. Um, also uh, had, had a few plot product roles while I was there too. Um, left City after seven years and started to get involved in the crypto uh, space. So I was, you know, I first got in tune with Bitcoin in like 2012, 2013, uh, thought I was a genius like everybody else when I went from like, you know, a hundred bucks to 1500 or 1400 before Mt. Gox. And then, uh, you know, I sold it because Apple pay came out. And so I completely misunderstood the narrative of Bitcoin at the time, but, um, it was kind of cool cause it went straight down to, to 200. <laughs> but, uh, after that, um, like I said, I got, I started getting involved in crypto. I started getting involved in the Ethereum ecosystem, started attending all the meetups, conferences, uh, made a lot of friends in that ecosystem, did some one-off um, projects with various uh, dApps and, and things like that, and then was able to co-found and run my own dApp in 2018, uh, so true bear market times. Uh, we were essentially building a, a an application to help solve misinformation online. So it was, it was called Proof. It was pretty cool, um, but you know, there we realized quite quickly that the infrastructure for blockchains uh, at that point in time wasn't really there to build a successful application. And I think that's what a lot of dApps realized at that time. Uh, there was no true chain link. There was no like Uniswap at that point. It just was really hard to build um, something that, uh, you know, mainstream users would be able to use. It's still a problem today. Um, but anyways, as I went through that, I uh, was able to, then to go into consulting, uh, did some consulting uh, for crypto and also just for financial services and M&A, and, &A and, uh, and then started getting really involved in the DeFi space personally, uh, started to really play around with all the protocols when Compound came out and when Aave and other ones um, uh, dropped and Uniswap, so, so really started to play around with that. And then um, you know, prior to that, when the Avalanche consensus paper dropped, I was really kind of intrigued by um, uh, you know, the possibilities from, from a layer one perspective of, of what Avalanche could, could, could become. And so I, I was always kind of like watching the project and was interested in getting involved. And then the right opportunity came and, uh, you know, I kind of joined as, as director of D5, I think it was back in, uh, in April or so, or end of April, um, and have been here ever since. And yeah, trying to get to know the community at this point. Wow, that's an awesome journey. 
Um, it's cool to hear you talk about you know Mt. Gox in the early Bitcoin days. If you were burned by Mt. Gox, you're definitely an OG in crypto. Uh, <laughs> hey, so I just want to give a chance to uh, for you know Justin, Oscar, and Brandon to say hello to you too. How's it going, guys? Hey, Luigi. Um, always great to speak. Um, I'd just like to say thank you for coming on. Um, I know how busy your schedule is and, and what a great job you and the team have been doing. Um, so, yeah, just really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty pumped to be here and kind of and kind of really get to know the Pangolin community a little bit more. Considering a lot of the Pangolin stuff happened before I was here uh, in terms of like the actual launch of Pangolin, uh, you know, it's it's good to kind of to kind of get uh get it you know kind of get more acquainted now hi luigi welcome it's nice to meet you hey luigi you too welcome. thank you yeah like like justin was saying you know i really appreciate how responsive you are to all the projects um you know as penguin we're talking to like dozens of projects already but as the avalanche director of DeFi, you're probably talking to like five times more projects than we are but but just to kind of, you know, have the time and attention for Pangolin and all the other native projects, really great to see. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just um, a follow-up question on, on what you're currently doing for, for Ava Labs and Avalanche. Can you tell us about your current role and responsibilities? What does a day-to-day look like for you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so the day-to-day changes. Um, early on, the day-to-day was, uh, you know, working with the, you know, with the team, you know, and the foundation, uh, really kind of getting Avalanche Rush scoped out and designed and building the relationships and using existing relationships to, you know, really, really show people that Avalanche was a worthwhile uh, project for them to, to consider deploying their, their dApps on, especially some of the ones that, you know, uh, I think, frankly, it gets overlooked, but have multiple choices in terms of layer ones to deploy on. Uh, you know, getting them to deploy here is... Uh, you know, back, if you remember back in like April, May, you know, wasn't, it's not really the easiest sell to make. Right. Uh, I know I, I was reading in the defiant today and that, you know, Ave has deployed now on Avalanche. This is the only the third chain it's deployed on. And that's uh, Ethereum and Polygon, which is, you know, like an Ethereum quasi side chain effectively. So I'd say Avalanche is probably the first deployment for Ave. That's, you know, completely different, layer one chain um you know so that that's that's really exciting but in terms of my role uh today and, and kind of what i'm what, what i've been focused on and working on really it, it's two things one is um reviewing and talking to new projects um you know i am laser focused on trying to find innovative applications in the ecosystem more than anything i think that's how we build true long-term value at avalanche uh for the ecosystem native projects that are innovative. We need like the Uniswaps and the, and the Aves and, and, and all those applications of, of, of a year ago to be coming from and starting on Avalanche and for that governance to live on Avalanche. Like that's our focus. So uh, that's part of my role. And the other part of my role is right now, uh, um, you know, working with projects in terms of Avalanche Rush, reviewing applications, um, you know, uh, we are talking to a lot of native projects. We're talking to a lot of non-native projects uh, for, um, you know, whether or not they qualify for rush rewards at this moment. Uh, if they do, uh, what that might look like, what it might be, security implications of, you know, distributing those rewards uh, via smart contracts um, and, and kind of really thinking through what we're actually trying to incentivize. So I, that's really kind of what my days look like. There's back-to-back calls usually and um, some pleasant, some unpleasant. And, uh, and that, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's great. No, that was really good insight into kind of your priorities and, and what you spend your time on. Um, I just want to call out how big of a deal is uh, it is that you got Ave to launch here and make it their top priority. Um, you know, like you said, they're they're one of the biggest projects. They're huge on Ethereum. I'm sure they're they're juggling so many priorities, but to get them to see the value of deploying on Avalanche and making it a priority for them, that's really big. Um, and I also want to you know just thank, thank you. you and your team for funneling all of these partners into Pangolin and the other projects. Um, and I also want to you know just thank, thank you. 
you and your team for funneling all of these partners into Pangolin and the other projects. Uh, I think we're announcing like one partnership per day ever since Rush started because so many projects are coming. They need marketing support, liquidity support, um, and big ones too. For example, I was talking to Ample Firth yesterday. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a year ago, I was just a, a DeFi degen aping into Ample. And then I'm, and today I'm on a call with, you know, Evan Kuo, founder of Ample for try, trying to get him a farm in Pangolin. So it's just really awesome to see things like that. Yeah, and, no, uh, I mean, it's, 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 that's exactly right, right? I mean, we, my conversations from when I first started to now are completely different. Um, you know, when I first started, it was like, oh, well, why should we deploy an avalanche? There's no liquidity. There's no volume. Um, you know, why are you guys special in terms of a layer one? Um, you know, they won't, some of them wouldn't take the calls unless I had a previous relationship. So I was happy and, and beneficial to have some of those. Um, but now it's like a telegram message, like, Hey, we just deployed. Um, and I'm like, what, uh, you guys wouldn't take my call like four months ago. Uh, so that's good to know. Um, but it, it, you know, it makes sense, right? Like people don't want to deploy their applications on a chain that doesn't have liquidity, usage, users, et cetera. So, uh, you know, that's why Avalanche Rush is so important from, you know, it's not the only thing that's important, but it is important because uh, we're trying to solve two, um, two problems. And when I say we, I mean, it's really the foundation's trying to solve two problems in terms of Avalanche Rush. One being users, right? You know, uh, we need, you know, wallets and, and new wallets to continue to come over to Avalanche and build that ecosystem up, build up a community uh, even larger than it is, right? And because of that, if you have users, you, you know, developers will want to deploy their really cool dApps here. They'll, they're, they'll be focused on deploying on Avalanche first versus, you know, any other chain or, or other chains, right? So it, it's a two-sided problem. You need developers and you need users, but you need both at the same time. So, Yeah, definitely. And I'd like to dig into like the vision of Avalanche Rush, but first I just want to get some commentary from the team about you know, how impressive and crazy it's been since the program started. So like maybe Justin, Oscar, Brandon, do you have any comments you want to add? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I think I had a very similar situation to Luigi. Um, I'd reach out to projects that I admire, uh, and I'd be like, you know, can you come to Avalanche? Like, um, and, and a lot of them at that stage weren't really interested. And now they're reaching out to us. They're getting back to us. You're seeing a huge influx of new users. There's obviously a lot of attention uh, on socials. Uh, it's It's been, we described it with Jay the other day, it's been like a light switch. Like there was one week when Rush started or when, when all of the kind of influx happened and it was literally night and day. Um, so it's been pretty much a whirlwind. And yeah, for that, like you got to give a lot of credit to Luigi and his team for, for, for helping facilitate that because if it was chaos for us, I can only imagine how, how hectic it must have been for them. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was pretty hectic. <laughs> yeah, it- I definitely know what you mean, Justin. Just it was so hard to get people to even pay attention, and now you know they're begging us for them to come and launch. And um, so let's kind of dig into just a vision of Avalanche Rush. You know, like how that idea came about, what kind of planning needed to be in place before it could formally launch. Could you give us some insight into that, Luigi? Um, yeah. So I think that. Really, it goes down to kind of what I was just alluding to before. Um, you know, when when I you know when I the team and the foundation surveyed the landscape of what DeFi looked like on Avalanche back in you know the spring, it was like okay, um, there's some good organic growth here. Um, there's some infrastructure things that could be resolved in terms of <laughs> a better bridge. Um, you know, a chain link Oracle. Uh, support would would be super helpful this way we can get lending Um, so those were three things that we identified which were blockers for the ecosystem to grow further from DeFi. so we needed lending better bridging and um, and chain link support so you know as we lined those up and and we knew that those were were on their way to being delivered and they're never delivered on time just by virtue of how the space and every technical space works um you know, we really uh, started to then think about, okay, so like, 
we're going to have all the pieces in place here. Uh, the avalanche is going to be really set up. We think that we think the layer one chain technology is prime for DeFi, perfect for DeFi, super decentralized, instant finality. Um, you know, all the things that you want mission critical dApps to, to be deployed on. Um, you know, we, so, so, so we, so we thought, okay, so how do we get a bunch of people to come over, uh, try out the ecosystem and, you know, start using it. And so we, you know, obviously liquidity mining is a well-known uh, technique throughout DeFi and, 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 and it works, right? Uh, it's not, it's not really rocket science from that perspective of how it works. It's people, people uh, get an additional incentive for their yields. And, uh, and because of that, they, um, you know, they bridge over and, and, they, and they enjoy it. They try out applications. And, and that's really important um, because that allows, uh, you know, that allows those dApps to iterate. Uh, it allows them to have a community. It allows them to really get feedback from users, uh, all the things that you really are looking for, right? Because the user problems are usually the hardest. I liken it a lot to like, you know, when Uber uh, started out and they first, you know, really uh, um, were giving out those $30 free Uber rides to everybody, you know, they, they felt like they had a good product and they wanted people to try it, right? And it, it was going to be really hard to get drivers to sign up as Uber drivers if there's no users. Uh, so you really needed a way to start to kick that, to kick that momentum going and get that marketplace up and running. And for us, it's not, it's not this similar. Uh, we need the users. Um, this way, the developers want to deploy their great applications here. This way, they want to continue to build features. This way, they want to continue to to focus on uh, innovating, and so it's it's a two sided issue. So the the uh, the idea really came about by doing liquidity mining. We 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 reviewed some other programs that were previously uh, announced, right? Uh, Compound's initial one, you know, Polygon had one. Um, other applications that, that that were able to do it, um, like um, I think it's uh, Epsilon uh, or sorry Ellipsis. Um, so there was a bunch of projects we reviewed and a bunch of projects we looked at liquidity mining, and we thought that that would be a good mechanism to kind of kick this off and start it. Um, and then it was really about bringing over some blue chip applications to uh, number one bring credibility to the chain, number two really bring their users over to try the chain. Right, that's important. Uh, there are a lot of users out there from some of these blue chip applications, which are kind of frustrated from being on Ethereum and, and really want to have a better experience. Uh, and so we felt that we could provide that. And and, and because of that, I think the, com the combination of um, Avalanche Rush and uh, all the infrastructure pieces being in place is, is what allowed people to funny enough, have a lot of fun on chain before any of the blue chips were even deployed, which is kind of like the most interesting dynamic about the way it all went down, right? Like we announced it, I think it was August 18th or something like that. And then Banky went live and they were the first uh, recipient of Rush Rewards. And it really started to kick, kickstart this crazy dynamic and everybody was bridging over and trying it before we even really got the program, uh, you know, like really deployed over. So uh, you know, really uh, having any rewards like super, super activated. So uh, that was really quite interesting to watch play out. Uh, and so, yeah, that's kind of like the thought process of, of Avalanche Russian and how it really came about. That's awesome. Thanks for walking us through that journey. And I just want to call out, I think the most impressive part to me was just the patience and the timing of launching the program. Like, I'm sure you guys were itching to be like, hey, there's all this money available, but you had to get the bridge ready, get the network upgrades ready, and everything had to kind of line up perfectly. So, so kudos for that. Yeah, that was, that was actually really hard. Um, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of team members chomping at the bit to tweet things all the time, so... Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of team members chomping at the bit to tweet things all the time. So, you know, I was locking people up in rooms constantly. <laughs> not not going to name names though, right? Um, I'm, I, I'm normally the one on our team that, that has the big mouth. <laughs> and so Leo, Leo has to like hold me back. <laughs> yeah. But uh, before I ask a follow-up question about Rush, Justin, do you want to just give us your perspective on how it all went down? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, it's so challenging, you know. Like, like I see this sometimes in commu- in, the, in the communities. You get like this kind of small information, and people don't see all the hard work, all the kind of things that are happening behind the scenes, uh, and how challenging some of this stuff is. Um, I think Rush has been absolutely amazing. Um, you, you're never going to get <laughs> when you spend that amount of money, and when you do something that ambitious. You're not going to do it perfectly. Anyone that thinks differently is probably a little bit naive. There's going to be a few little road bumps, but you, you, you know, it's because of the ambitious nature of what Rush is. It's so big. It's so um, cool. So yeah, for for us, it was incredible. I, like what what it also did was it created this almost gamification of the space. So you almost have to compete uh, hyper um, in, 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 in at a lot higher level because now you, you really have some very big financial rewards for your project that Avalanche uh, and the Avalanche Foundation can give to you guys to, to help grow and foster your community. Um, so it's created this cool gamification. It's obviously created a lot of eyes. Um, and from a, like just from an administrative uh, perspective, it's very impressive how they managed to align all these kind of parallel streams into one program. Um, so I've been, yeah, I've been very impressed. Yeah, definitely. And I uh, just want to say thanks, Luigi, and to the foundation for including Pangolin early on uh, with a $2 million allocation. We used it for single-sided PNG staking, which was highly requested for a long time. And it's been very successful. Something like uh, 13 million PNG are locked up in that staking program, which is about 20% of our supply. Uh, the APR is still really high. It's like 75%. So uh, you know, thanks a lot for the inclusion and the support from program yeah for sure uh, happy uh happy to have pangolin one of the true ogs in the space um, participate for sure and i think it's a good segue into a follow-up question about what you look for in projects when you add them to the rush program um you know what type of qualities do they need or features should they have and how do you prioritize what projects to add yeah, it's a good question. And uh, I think Justin alluded to it before, you know, like, uh, you know, we're not perfect by any means. And it is a pretty, pretty large task uh, in terms of, um, you know, creating this incentive. But, uh, you know, well, we we start with principles first. And, you know, what I alluded to before was, uh, you know, the most important principles, right? Avalanche Rush is a user and developer incentive, uh, uh, sorry, a user and developer acquisition program. We are trying to get users to the, to the, to the chain and we're trying to get developers to build new applications on chain. Um, so we start with those principles first. As it comes to how rewards are being distributed, how they are, uh, how we're evaluating projects, uh, you know, we have, we have additional principles. Um, you know, our focus long term with this program, and I like to, you know, make sure that I, you know, make sure people know that uh, this program is not a three month program. Um, you know, we are not just you know, going to throw all this money at the ecosystem in three months, you know, it's going to have a tail. Um, and that tail is going to be purposeful from an innovation perspective. Right. So the initial burst will be for creation, you know, for the, uh, for the uh, incentivization to bring users over and liquidity and volume and all the things that all, DeFi applications really need to be performing at their best. Um, and then, you know, we can really focus on innovating, uh, innovative uh, applications. So, uh, yeah, when evaluating projects, we really, really hope and look to find uh, new uh, deployments or uh, new features that are being developed and can use Rush to uh, as a way to bootstrap like a, a new product launch or a new uh, uh, feature set or something that uh, needs bootstrapping. Um, what we don't really like to do or what we're really trying not to do is just provide rewards uh, in a way that um, is essentially just, you know, keeping the status quo. We want to use Rush as a way to to push the ecosystem, you know, as far as it can go. Uh, that's one way. The other way is obviously for the blue chips to come over and bring their users. Um, that's important, right? Because somebody comes over that's an Aave user from Ethereum, 
they want to swap an asset, they come to Pangolin, you know, they try any other DEXs and they, and, you know, they can decide, you know, if they like the experience and, and if they, uh, and, if, and maybe they, they become, you know, a new user of that application, right? So we try to get that to spill over. So in terms of reviewing the applications, you know, just kind of going a little further here and, and incentivizing, our focus has, was initially on the blue chips, right, to start the program. Second, we turned our attention to Avalanche Native Projects, Pangolin, Trader Joe, Banky, um, Yieldiac, Avalanche, and, and, and we're continuing to work through that process right now, the existing uh, Avalanche Native ecosystems, right? And it's not as simple as just saying, hey, here's, you know, X amount of dollars and, uh, you know, good luck. It's more a factor of like, hey, you know, how can we best distribute these in a way that's going to be the most efficient, in a way that's going to be the most effective, in a way that's going to help your protocol be more successful? Uh, and, and so we're having those conversations like we had with you guys, um, you know, about best ways to distribute. Uh, so so that, that, that takes time. Uh, takes a lot of thought and it grows a lot of gray hair. Um, but, you know, that's, that's effectively the way we're thinking about it for the natives. And then the other part that nobody's really seen yet is, you know, we're going to be using rush rewards for new applications that deploy natively. So, you know, if you're a new application and you have something that is super exciting, um, it hasn't deployed yet. You know, once the security, you know, once we're comfortable with the security of the contracts and everything, then, you know, Rush can be used as a way to bootstrap the launch of that, that product. And that's pretty exciting. Uh, that can get people um, usage quite quickly. So we're hoping to kind of use that, uh, you know, um, for all new applications. And then last is really the cross-chain uh, protocols that are not quite the true, true blue chips, but are also, you know, successful applications. And uh, that's a harder one. Uh, we're working through those. It's, it's challenging because, you know, you want to find the right balance between, you know, over incentivizing the same primitive and DeFi over and over again versus, you know, trying to extend and, and, and grow the community out to, 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 you know, to other communities. So that, that itself is a challenge. Um, but those are all the things that we're kind of, you know, evaluating and working through at the moment. Thanks for that insight into the thought process. Uh, very thorough. And, you know, it's definitely tough, like you said, to balance between uh, you know, bringing in new projects, uh, supporting existing native projects, new projects that want to build. Uh, Justin, do you want to give your thoughts on how that balance has been? Yeah, I mean, it's always controversial. Like, I, I, I kind of feel sorry for Luigi and the team in a lot of ways because, no matter what approach, there's always going to be criticism from some quarters. Um, I think what you've got to do is you've definitely got to, there's some, like like the way I always look at it is there's strategic building blocks that are um, almost essential and non-negotiables. Um, I see Curve as one of those. I think without Curve, um, there, there, there's just some protocols and some very cool stuff, Pendle as an example, that just can't be built. Um, you know, so I, 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 it's a healthy That's balance. Right. You know, like so, and then and you also want to for stable assets and, and blue chip assets. You want to have no slippage on those, and and curve allows it. You can already see in one day since curve is deployed, how how much cheaper it is to swap stable coins. Exactly. So it's spot. So so the thing is, I can understand the complexities of having a strategic vision for the DeFi ecosystem while still trying to please everyone. Um, and that's that's a challenging line to walk. So, like, um, you, of course, you want to reward the people that have been building natively and that have been really growing the ecosystem. But you also have to be pragmatic and understand that without a healthy DeFi ecosystem, those projects don't really have a healthy home to live. So you, it's that line I think you've got to straddle. And I think, you know, like, look at Curve. Like, I, like I'm so excited that Curve's here because it allows all these protocols that I love to not come to mm -hmm. yeah like L, you know like there's there's so many protocols that use curve and not only that but it makes so many other protocols more easy to use just because the slippage is going to change uh it's, it's an important primitive and there's others as well that are really important you know uh 
you know, I know we, you know, we have Banky here, but to have competition in the lending space is pretty important as well, right? You don't want just one lending platform. You want multiple lending platforms. This way they can push each other to become, you don't want just one lending platform. You want multiple lending platforms. This way they can push each other to become better, you know, kind of like what, you know, what's going on with Pangolin and Trader Joe. It's great to see, uh, you know, a healthy competition between all DEXs and healthy competition, lending platforms, healthy competition with yield farms and auto compounders. That's what, that's, that's what that'll make the whole ecosystem stronger, um, you know, as we go along. But I think, you know, one thing that, that, that Justin said that um, I think rings true and, and, and is true is, uh, you know, we, we, we are, uh, I hope, people understand that we do our best to listen to the community. Um, you know, nothing that we, you know, in terms of Ava Labs, or at least myself, I could speak to myself, nothing that I've said um, or I've done doesn't, you know, get revisited and rethought about or, you know, uh, that we can't iterate on or, or fix or improve or do better on. Like we are constantly listening, right? We, you know, I think most of us are in this space believe in decentralization as a whole, right? and the powers of decentralization. And, and so, um, you know, having more minds who are closer to certain things, like I know my, I myself can't be close to every DAP. It's just impossible. Um, you know, and, and our team can't be close to every single DAP. We just, you know, it's just not physically possible, especially the way the ecosystem is growing right now. And so, you know, uh, hearing from the community, having people like Justin come to us, you know, with feedback and, and other, you know, th that's helpful, you know, so, uh, you know, just hope to create a, you know, continue to create a constructive dialogue, improve the program. This way it's the best for everybody. And, you know, we plan to continue to iterate this program. You know, uh, I don't think we will, will ever assume that what we've, you know, the way we designed it from day one is the way it'll end up on, you know, day, day Z or X, whatever that last day is. Yeah, definitely. I, I always appreciate how receptive the, Ava Labs team is to feedback and to just talking to people, users, teams, builders, anyone. Um, you'll have a conversation and you'll come on chats like this with us, and it's really great to see that that type of culture here. So I think it's a good uh, transition into our next topic of Pangolin itself. I'm just curious to get your opinion, Luigi, on Pangolin's role in the current Avalanche DeFi landscape, and then maybe follow up with what Pangolin's doing well and where it can improve. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, Pangolin's role. Well, you know, Pangolin, I believe is, you know, uh, top two in terms of volume across the ecosystem. It's clearly, you know, one of the uh, most sought out DEXs in terms of how people can, uh, uh, can swap their assets. Right. And so, uh, you know, it's clearly plays a pivotal role in the ecosystem. Uh, you know, I think Pangolin has done a really nice job of adding in features like, uh, um, the uh, uh, fiat arm ramps, um, the uh, limit orders, uh, uh, all these things. But I'm really pumped up about the things that I'm seeing that may come out, which is like um, the new UI, which looks really sweet and was always kind of a pain point for me. So I'm really pumped about that. Uh, and also like the way you guys have been going about and building the community. Uh, you know, those are all the things I'm pretty excited about. Um, and, and I, and I think, you know, building a community for, for a project like Pangolin is the most important thing. So in terms of what it could do better, I, you know, I think it's all things that, uh, you guys are already, you know, it seems like the, the community is already addressing, uh, you know, the token emissions has, has always been pretty important to me. I mean, I know we've spoken about that in the past and, uh, and I saw the, you know, proposals that are out there and I think that that's you know, a necessity at this point, uh, I think that it would be really, really helpful for the, for the pangolin, uh, ecosystem and, and, and ability to grow. I think that that'll be huge. Um, so, uh, excited about that, excited about, uh, some of the other, uh, things that Justin's been teasing on Twitter. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Again, and, th th this is me needing to hold back sometimes. I get too excited. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good to get excited. I mean, you know, people need to. People need to. Uh, I mean, I mean, hear from me, the person who's literally been uh, teasing something for a month and a half. That I, you know, I understand the uh, the importance of teasing. 
especially when you're trying to buy time. So, uh, you know, it can have a good effect, you know, but you got to be able to deliver. And uh, I think you guys will. And, and I'm excited about, uh, like I said, I think the governance is going to be huge. Uh, it's clearly, it's clearly a fundamental uh, issue for Pangolin in terms of him being able to farm on the decks. Uh, so, so I think that that's going to be, that's going to be really important. Yeah, thanks, Luigi. I appreciate the feedback, and I think it's really accurate. You nailed it on the, on both the positives and, and where we can improve. And I uh, just want to call out kind of a new role that Pangolin sort of taken on after the rush, which I think is just being a home and a partner for all of these projects looking to build here. Um, I, I think we've been adding like one partner per day almost. Um, and just this week we added OIN, uh, Teddy Cash, Rome Terminal, Iron Finance, Reflexor, just there's so many projects that want to come and build and just kind of need that, that little boost of marketing, maybe some farms to get started. And not all of them are going to be successful. Uh, some of them might not do that well, but that's okay because we want to give them all a chance. Like they're part of our community too. Um, so that's kind of a new role we've stepped into. Um, do you have any thoughts or insight into that, Luigi? Um, you know, I, I think along the lines of kind of what I was just was getting into, but I think your ability to to connect with new projects quickly is you know is one of the most important things as a Dex, right? Like I think you guys were, were one of the quicker ones to put up the the Teddy Cash pool. Uh, I know that you know that that gets noticed, right? So in, so in some respects, it's a it's a balance for you guys to to balance projects that are. Uh, you know, to balance security in terms of, you know, what could be a rug, what can't be a rug versus, um, you know, what, what, you know, what will be the next thing that's going to get people excited, right? Like that, that's an important component in terms of just the, the fundamental uh, uh, LP for his decks. So uh, I, I think you guys are doing a good job with that. Thanks. I appreciate that. And, you know, you're definitely right about the safety. We want to definitely vet that new projects, existing projects are, have safe practices and contracts, especially now that we're, we're getting so big, it's just hard to keep track. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. So just wanted to co cover a couple more topics today. Uh, again, really appreciate you coming on to talk about your role, Avalanche, Avalanche Rush. Um, the topics I wanted to get to before we run out of time today, we'll go for about an hour, is just the next year of growth at Avalanche and also what projects are coming that you're really excited about. So can you tell us your vision for the next year at Avalanche? What does that look like? Uh, yeah. So we have a number of things to execute upon. I mean, I know there's platform upgrades that, that need to come out. There's a, you know, the wallet that's being worked on. There's other things behind the scenes that are, that, you know, just from, uh, you know, that, that'll be announced. That's pretty exciting, but, you know, my full focus right now is 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 using Avalanche rosters as a way to really bring over users and 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 incentivize new new you know innovative applications to deploy. That's my sole focus. That's what I'm laser focused on. If we can win the innovation uh, game, then we can you know we will have a very fruitful and successful chain uh, long term. You know, I'm also focused on helping to build community. I think. You know, it goes it goes overlooked sometimes, but you know what Ethereum has more than anybody else is a great community. Uh, they just there's just like a real culture there. Anybody who's ever been part of that ecosystem knows that, and you know it's really like a uh, you know from the people that I know at least, it's like really an ecosystem that gives back. You know, people people do the right thing by each other. Uh, everybody's there, you know, kind of to support each other. That's really important. And, you know, we need to be doing that as well. And, you know, so building a community, building relationships with, you know, doing things like this, meeting people in person, like when I saw you in New York, um, those are all things that, that really start to, to build a, an ecosystem. So, you know, hopefully one day AlphaCon or whatever they'll call it, that conference could be, could be exciting. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, in terms of vision, um, you know, and innovative applications, I, I think, you know, there's there's some interesting ones that are still deploying. I know Alpha Homora announced that they'll be deploying. Instadap is going to be deploying. Barnbridge recently deployed. Um, you know, those are those are those are really strong applications that bring new primitives, and, and users should really try them out. Especially that bring new primitives, and, and users should really try them out. Especially the Avalanche users that 
we're not big ETH maxis or we're not using Ethereum all that much. They should really see what, you know, what was built and what can be used, especially with, you know, not super expensive gas and, 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 and that instant finality. So I think we'll see a lot. I think we'll see some, some interesting things come through. Uh, I know there's some projects that we've seeded, um, you know, from the foundation is seeded at least, uh, and that has, um, that have not deployed yet. And, you know, I'm excited to see those finally come through and, and see what they can bring uh, to the ecosystem in terms of new primitives and, and new excitement as well. For sure, for sure. I really like that you called out culture on Avalanche as a high priority. Um, I think we have a great culture here, a unique one. Uh, I definitely think we can just keep building on it and, pro- and improving on it. And I'd love to hear maybe like Justin or Brandon's opinion on the culture here versus Ethereum or other chains you've been on. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'll, I'll step in. Um, so I'll tell you, there, there's a lot to be said uh, if you've worked at, let's say, like a smaller startup versus a, a bigger kind of corporate giant. You immediately notice that smaller startup kind of vibe. Um, and while Avalanche is by no means a, a small chain, especially from the beginning, some of the OG projects, all the, de- the developers kind of got together pretty frequently um, as we were solving different issues that popped up together on Avalanche. Um, so that, that culture kind of started there and is still persisting today. You know, Leo mentioned that Penguin is kind of becoming a, a hub for new projects to really bring that team and those developers into the same atmosphere. Um, and you really need that. I think you, you can kind of come out to Avalanche and it's small enough where you can reach out and talk to any of the players you really want to. And they're, they're welcome to that. They're open to it. And I think that's a big strength that Avalanche has, whereas Ethereum or something has gotten big enough where it's very difficult to do that. Right? You might reach out and you won't hear back until you've got you know a billion in volume. Yeah, Brandon, I think you nailed it that um, we, we, it still feels very cooperative here. Um, cooptition, if you will, even even competing projects um, will have you know, civil conversations and help each other. And it's just so great to see all of these people uh, that believed in Avalanche that we're building here for so long, uh, knowing it would succeed. Now, I'm seeing a lot of people on the call that I, I work with on a weekly, daily basis. We've got you know, Mayor Sarb from Marker, uh, Lava is a new staking projects cedarnet does videos and people from pangolin wilson from ku see druba from ava labs who helps out pangolin he's a legend it's just it's he's a really my awesome. savior druba's my savior <laughs> oh man it, it, it just I, I met druba at masari mainnet in new york and it just blew my mind how you know professional and smart he was but how cool and and just down to earth he was at the same time and i think he's also still going to school but building Avalanche and Pangolin. That's just the caliber of people that you know, build for Ava Labs and build an Avalanche DeFi. It's just amazing to see that. Yeah, but, I think um, that's right. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the faces that I'm seeing are people I come across constantly. But, you know, what I would say is that if there are projects or people on this call that, you know, uh, don't or aren't connected with me or, or, or want to connect in some respect, you know, my Twitter DMs are always open. I, I try my best. Uh, you know, I have two little kids. So I do try my best to, to, to find the time to kind of um, answer, answer everybody as long as I don't think it's a scam. Um, but, but yeah, so, you know, please reach out, happy to kind of hear feedback or, you know, um, discuss something. You know, I, I'm pretty responsive from that perspective. Thanks, Luigi. I appreciate that. And so we covered just a lot of good topics today. So we kind of went over Luigi's background. We talked about the rush and how it got to where it is. Uh, talked about Pangolin a bit. Talked about some exciting projects. Um, Justin, Brandon, Oscar, were there any topics or questions you want to ask Luigi while we still have a bit of time on our call? Yeah, happy to take questions too from the audience. And, you know, if that, if that's yeah, audience questions to too. Cool. I see someone requesting speaker, Jack. I'll just let him on to see if they have a question. Oh, boy. Hey, Jack. How's it going?
Jack, you're on mute if you're trying to say something. Okay. Um, yeah, he's maybe that was, a, that was a false question. Uh, we've got <laughs> Coop coming on. So Coop just started doing digital marketing for us at Pangolin. How's it going, Coop? Cool. Hey, Coop, are you there? I am here. Uh, so thanks for all the, the information. I thought it was great. At first, I wanted to say that I'm a product of your strategy around Rush. I came over with Banky, and then Pangolin caught me up in the community, and now I'm pretty heavily involved in a couple projects. So it's working, and um, I'm an example of that. And this question that I wanted to ask was, you mentioned eventually looking towards innovative dApps that are specifically built for Avalanche. What stage does a dApp need to be in to come to you and talk about um, rewards or just getting some sort of support in terms of building? Is it, you know, is idea stage too early? Is, you know, where do you look for that? So I would say that idea stage is probably too early for incentives, but not too early um, to talk to the BD team at Avalabs for, you know, grants or investments, uh, token purchases. You know, the, those are all things that we can do early on to kind of help support uh, projects. Uh, so definitely not too early. to You know, I mean, I, I would imagine that, you know, just coming to us with an idea that's not fully fleshed out, that's not going to be uh, – that's not going to be met with, you know, great, you know, it's not going to yeah. be greatly received, but, but, you know, a, a strong idea. I, I, we've, we've actually provided grants for, for, for a few of dApps that, um, you know, at that point we're a deck and, and, and actual research. So, um, you know, and we're happy to be the reason that that dApp deploys natively on Avalanche and, and help it to help happy to assist in terms of incentives, you know, we'd like, you know, the protocol to, to, to be live in terms of the timing of actually turning those incentives on, right? You don't, the, from my perspective, the worst thing that can happen is we're incentivizing something that is an exploit. And, it, you know, it, 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 it's possible that it happens because we're, we're in DeFi and exploits happen to even the most OGs like, you know, Compound. So it's all possible. But, you know, if we can minimize that risk, we'd like to. So, yeah, we'd like to have audits on the smart contracts, which are, are going to be distributing rewards. Uh, we'd like to have, um, you know, uh, some usage on those smart contracts this way. You know, at least, you know, that could reduce the, the window of risk from an exploit perspective. Um, but, yeah, other than that, you know, I think we're game to, to kind of have conversations. Just please be patient with us because we're a lim limited number of human beings and, you know, we can only have so many conversations. Of course. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for coming on to ask a question, Coop, and, and glad you're involved in the ecosystem now. Uh, I think it was just a couple of weeks ago we were hosting spaces, and Coop came on and asked a question, was like, how do I get involved? And now he's involved, and I think a lot of people that's in the awesome. community start that way, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that, I mean, that's the whole point of all this, right? We want to get more people involved. And and, and, and at least one thing that, that keeps me super bullish is the new people we get involved really love the chain, really love the infrastructure, really love the finality, love the import, important core tenets, and the other stuff's all fixable. So that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I, I just loved the experience compared to what I've had elsewhere, and I'm here. Sweet. Love to hear that. Cool. So we have, uh, you know, just a few minutes left. Does anyone else want to come on and give a comment, ask a question? We're very friendly up here. Want to come on and give a comment, ask a question? We're very friendly up here. And if you don't feel comfortable asking here, just drop by Telegram or Avalanche Discord. We're very reachable on a lot of mediums. Mm -hmm. So not sure if we're going to get any more questions, but um, let's just give some you know, final thoughts on, on DeFi, on Avalanche. 
uh, before we wrap up here. Luigi, are there any messages you want to leave us with before we wrap up? Um, yeah, I think there's a few things, you know, uh, I think I hit on a lot of things, uh, you know, in this hour talk and, and I'm a little winded from talking so much, but, uh, I would say that, you know, we constantly listen to feedback and, you know, we do take it in and we always kind of try to improve with all the feedback we get. Uh, we're not perfect. We, we don't try to be, but we try to be the best that we can. And, you know, uh, I think in terms of rush, uh, I think there's going to be, um, you know, a lot of iteration of, of Avalanche Rush as we go along, as we continue to learn and get new feedback and new details. And as we see what's effective, right? Like Avalanche Rush is no different than building a new product. You know, you release an MVP, you kind of see what the usage is like, you hear the feedback from users, you iterate upon that and you make changes and then you roll out uh, maybe like a beta or, or an alpha and then you iterate on that and you roll out a beta and then you know you finally get to a final product right so uh, that's kind of how I look at it like I don't like to try to um, you know assume I'm right about everything or assume we're right about everything and 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 then you know later say oops sorry you know it's it's rather be iterative as we go along so uh, I guess that that's it for me uh, happy to uh, happy to be here with the Pangolin community and look forward to continuing to engaging with you guys. Really appreciate that, Luigi. It was great having you on. And Justin, Oscar, Brandon, anybody else want to leave us with some final thoughts before we wrap up? Maybe I can just add to one comment. Um, well, what took my attention is that while talking about Avalanche Rush, Luigi mentioned bringing some blue chip applications, bringing them and their users. Um, so we actually have this mindset at Pangolin as well, because each and every day we are doing exciting partnerships and growing ecosystem by attracting the users from these apps and their original chains, right? So um, that's really awesome. And I just wanted to add this. Um, thanks for joining our Twitter Spaces, Luigi. I enjoyed it very much, and I hope everyone as well did. Um, thanks for hosting me, y'all. Thank you. Great comment, Oscar. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, just to reiterate, you know, the, the mindset at Pangolin, and I, I think we should all have it at Avalanche, is, is to grow the pie, lift the tide for everyone. You know, we're, we're getting pretty big here, but it can get way bigger, and we should be focused on that growth. Okay. Um, those are some good thoughts. Justin, Brandon, do you have anything to say? Or, or otherwise, we're just going to wrap up then. I'm all good. Um, yeah, just thanks, Luigi, again. Uh, thanks for all the hard work that sometimes can seem a bit thankless. Um, like, yeah, we just really appreciate it. And I like, just want to say how um, I've been impressed by your, your engagement. Um, you know, I say something and within like an hour you've dealt with it. Like, like I've been incredibly thankful and uh, I, yeah, just from me personally, dude, like I really appreciate it. No, oh, thank you, man. Uh, it goes both ways. So that's, uh, that's how we'll build the community together. Cool. Thanks for that, Justin. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us in this chat. Uh, I learned a ton from Luigi, had a good time talking about Avalanche, Rush, DeFi, and we'll see you next time on Spaces. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Cheers, everyone.